a mass material is defined by uh, its, its properties, how it responds to light, and it's characterized by the properties being defined by its microstructure, in fact its nanostructure. Uh, a nice example of that would be silver. So if you take uh, silver and polish it, it's a very, very good mirror. It's used many years as a mirror. But if you do something else with silver, if you grind it into very, very fine nanoparticles, and um, where do you find those? You find them, you find them in a photographic negative. Um, the black and white negatives, the black is silver. And so by completely changing the structure of the silver, it's still silver, you can alter, completely alter the way it responds to light. So polish the silver, it reflects light, grind it up into particles, and it's completely different, it, it absorbs light very, very well. And that's the idea behind uh, the mass material concept, that uh, grinding things up into little tiny nanoparticles is one way, but you can also make more complicated structures and get much more com complicated responses, such as changing the refractive index uh, of a material to values which we've uh, never been able to obtain before, and consequence, amazing uh, properties. So for example, in the case of the laser, the first uh, really big commercial application was those lasers you see in supermarket checkouts. A very, very simple thing. But now, many, many years after the invention of the laser, you see them doing things that you wouldn't even have imagined. Even the inventor of the laser wouldn't have imagined, such as surgery, welding, and of course, the huge application of lasers to uh, the internet. So I hope it will be with mess materials that we're now something like uh, 15, almost 20 years from when the first uh, important mess materials were, were developed. And only now are we seeing the applications. The applications that uh, are being made are first in, in the, the, the regions of uh, uh, communications frequencies such as you use for uh, cell phones but also for satellite communications uh, where people can design cheap steerable antennae which enable you to communicate via satellite instead of using the cell phone network. And that can be important for people who are out in the desert. It can be done already, but metal materials can do it much, much cheaper and much, much lighter and consume a lot less power. The, the receivers, satellite receivers which are being designed now can work from the USB socket of your, your laptop. So, so that's doing something we already do, we're doing it better. Looking to the future, uh, there will be more radical things, uh, more technical things such as enabling terahertz uh, sources to be very efficient. Terahertz is a new radio frequency that we, we work with. It's already used for things like um, scanning at airports uh, and uh, sensing uh, the environment of autonomous vehicles. But we really need a, a cheap, efficient source, and metamaterials can help there as well. Another area where they, they, my colleague Richard Sims is, is looking into is uh, making it easier to detect the, the, the very weak magnetic signals that come in a magnetic resonance imaging scan. Uh, there, if you want very high resolution, you've got to get the uh, pick up a very weak source deep inside uh, the body and metamaterials are proving to be quite a good way of doing that. can pick up the signal with low noise and also with, with low potential damage to the patient as well. So the applications, I'm very pleased to say, are beginning to emerge, but what I hope is that in, in the next few years we'll see applications which are, uh, are completely revolutionary and, and weren't, weren't envisaged when those first very simple metamaterials were built all those years ago. Maybe, if we're lucky, we can follow the astonishing trajectory of the laser. Using an ordinary lens, uh, that is to say a piece of glass which is curved, you, you can use it to bring light to a very fine focus and that's used in all sorts of circumstances. 
One obvious way is we use lenses is in a microscope to see things. Uh, other ways are to uh, focus light so that you can sense uh, molecules to do analysis in chemistry. But all of these applications are limited by the ability of that curved glass lens to focus really, really finely. And there's a limit that was uh, discovered uh, many years ago by Abbe that says that you can only uh, focus light to about half its wavelength. That's about half uh, a micron. And that limits what you can see. It limits how focus, how powerful a focus you can make, how dense you can crush the light. And that's really important for, a really important restriction for, for many things because in microscopy, um, you're just beginning to see inside the human cell at that limit. And so there are many things you can't see with an ordinary microscope that the biologists desperately want to see. So biologists are desperate to see uh, finer resolution. Also, if you want to sense molecules, um, you sense molecules by having the light interact with an electron. But the electron sits on the molecule, which is about a nanometer in size, typically, maybe 10 nanometers, it's a big molecule. And the light, you can't squash it down to better than hundreds of nanometers. So you have this conversation between a mouse and an elephant, and it, it's not a very good conversation. Whereas if we could squash the light down to the nanometer, we could, we could get to the level where we could sense a single molecule, and that would be the ultimate limit. And we're, we're trying technologies for doing this, and now it is possible to crush light down to a nanometer. And so, with very modest inputs of power, you can get in a very small volume, very high concentrations of, of energy. And there are lots of things you can do with this, some of which I mentioned. Yes, there were many critics, and I have to say that when this, this first happened and the paper was published, I was very upset by the criticisms. Nobody likes to have hard things said against them. Uh, but slowly I realized that um, if intelligent people uh, think you're wrong, and they're wrong for thinking you're wrong, then maybe you discovered something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and also, maybe that uh, the, uh, the controversy will uh, attract other people to be interested in what you've done and maybe to help you. Maybe some of them will also criticize you. But what, what criticism does is, is spark uh, a big debate. If it's by intelligent people and if the debate's conducting the right spirit of inquiry and debate. And ultimately, that's, that's what happened. Sure. The reason we tried to do this was, well, actually, it was a joke, <laughs> I have to say. Um, we, we had these technologies, which we knew were very powerful, and I was invited to uh, 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 an invitation-only com conference um, funded by DARPA, the, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the, the USA Army. And uh, they said, well, your, your job is, is to liven things up to, I think the words were ginger things up. Uh, so I thought, well, what can I, what can I say to surprise people? And so I said my usual thing about equations and metamaterials and so on. And then I said, oh, by the way, uh, we can make something invisible. And I wrote down a very simple formula were doing this and then I sat down and I expected everybody to laugh but they didn't laugh they were scribbling on their notebooks <laughs> and uh, then I realized that people were going to take this more seriously than I'd intended uh, it's been a good vehicle for showing the power um, but also it it's it's been a way of uh, drawing attention uh, to some very important theoretical and experimental concepts. Um, so it's really been a vehicle for showcasing uh, what we've done. The idea being, if you can do this, you can do anything. Well, uh, it is my first time in Santander, uh, surprisingly, because I often visit Spain, particularly 
San Sebastian, so you're only a little way along the coast. Um, uh, I've only been here one day. I'm delighted by the environment here, magnificent scenery, very beautiful town, and I'm expecting to hear some wonderful signs at your conference, but since I was the first speaker, uh, I have yet to hear the other speakers, but I'm anticipating an excellent conference. Thank you.